Good morning, everybody. You're watching Iowa Live here on CWI with 23. Very honored to be hanging out with Kim Baird yeah. this morning, who has some great advice, as always, to share with us today. And some Iowa laws we need to keep in mind in case a certain situation might happen. And today, Kim, we are discussing dog bites. Yes, I thought we'd talk about dog bites just because when people come into my office and sometimes they're the person who has been bit or their child's been bit or they own the dog that has, has done the biting, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions about what Iowa law is. And so the first one I wanted to talk about is there seems to be this thought that if your dog has never bitten anyone that you get one free bite because you didn't know the dog was a biter. And so, you know, the first one is kind of well, by free. I mean, you're not responsible for it. And that's just not the case in Iowa. In Iowa, it's called strict liability. And so if your dog bites someone, you're going to be liable. Um, now, there are some exceptions, because there's always exceptions to every rule. Uh, so there are some exceptions. So for instance, if somebody comes trespassing onto your land, um, you know, maybe your dog's you know, in your yard and uh, you've got an invisible fence or whatever, and somebody comes into your, into your yard and gets bit, um, you know, then they're trespassing. You know, so that might be a defense that you have or if someone is really taunting the dog I mean I right. think there's some yeah. some um, some uh, an exception for that as well but but I just want to make sure that people know that if your dog bites someone if you don't fall into one of the exceptions you're going to be liable for whatever the damages are is that so, pretty common okay. if that situation does happen that you need to reach out to a lawyer well a lawyer I would call my if so I would call if I own the dog I'm gonna call my insurance adjuster first, first to find out yes I would you know to find out whether or not I've got coverage um, and so that's another point. Not all homeowners policies cover dogs. Right. Or if they do, it's it's usually like a $10,000 limit or something like that. You don't necessarily think of insurance when you think of a uh of a, of a dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know, and you don't, I mean, any dog, I mean, remember we had, um, we had a Karen Terrier, not really known as being a vicious dog, kind of Toto, um, and I remember, um, you know, having a family member with their daughter there, and, you know, we had warned her, because she was really kind of taunting him, and we were just said, look, you know, he, he likes to stand up for himself, so he's not going to take too much of this, and he's not used to young kids, and he did nip at her, and, you know, got a little bit of her ear, and, you know, so we ended up, we just paid for the, the medical bills, but I remember saying to my husband, you know, I've never even checked to see if we have what our insurance is because, you know, I have Toto. I don't have, you know, something mm -hmm. that's considered to be a high risk dog. Right. So, you know, so so do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that's how check. we learn, right? Well, that's how we learn. That's how I learned that so lesson. Something we need check. to think about and check. Right. Yes, just check. We have yes. <coughs> so when does. does it get to that more serious moment of we need to get a, need to get a lawyer involved? Well, you know, so so if if you if you own the dog and you have insurance, you're insurance uh, adjuster and your insurance company will typically provide you with a lawyer okay. so you so I would check there first okay now if you are someone who has been bit or you have a, a family person that's been bit or a loved one or a child um, obviously go get medical care you know uh, uh, you know take them to the emergency room if if they've got you know pretty severe or se you know serious deep um, bite you want to make sure you get to the emergency room because there's usually going to be a plastic uh, surgeon person on call and so you want to make sure that those first stitches are are good and are going to you know hopefully not leave much of a scar right so anyway so that's my first tip but after that uh, yes you're gonna want to probably get a lawyer involved if you feel like you can you can try to negotiate with um, the insurance adjuster if you want because they're normally going to be calling you to find out um, you know what what happened what's your version of the story what do you think what do you recall um, when we typically get involved is very serious cases I've been involved in cases where ears have been completely torn off of children. I've been involved in cases where children's faces have been mauled. Usually it's kids. I don't know why dogs um, tend to, if they lose it, they lose it on a kid. Even even if a kid's not, you know, I, I have, in both the cases I just talked about, the dog ran out of the house, ran across the street and attacked the kid, or ran down the street and attacked the kid, you know, so the kid wasn't, the child wasn't really doing anything that provoked this. Um, so, you know, the, you know, or adults, a lot of times, you know, they'll, they'll be walking their dog and maybe their dog and, right. and they get attacked mm -hmm. and so now they've got, you know, scars on their hand and things like that. So. So you just want to make sure that if you're you try to, you want to get your medical bills, you want to get your medical records. Um, if you have witnesses, you want to make sure you take care of the witnesses. Um, and so if you want to negotiate it yourself, fine. If you want to get a lawyer involved, that's fine. Um, typically what we do when somebody calls us, 
we make sure we get pictures. So make sure you take pictures from when it happened and then as the scars or the treatment progresses. And, um, and typically, uh, you know, then we're involving, we're involved with an insurance adjuster. We're also always trying to see is there other insurance? I mean, was there an umbrella policy on the home maybe, or that the people had, that maybe there's more insurance somewhere else? For the, for the injury. But you do not need to prove that this dog has ever bitten before. You do not, you do not. Um, and um, so, you know, then that kind of brings me to the next point, and that is, so if you own a dog, um, you, you're gonna, wherever you live, you're gonna wanna check with those city ordinances to see what you're required to do. In Des Moines, for instance, they, they don't um, use the term vicious dog, they use the term um, high risk dog. And so there's an ordinance that requires that if your dog falls into the one one of, one of the high risk categories and they identify some breeds but they also I think talk about maybe a dog that's been known to bite mm -hmm. you know that type of thing then uh, in Des Moines you're required to have a hundred thousand dollar insurance policy you're also mm -hmm. required to have um, fencing that I believe is like six feet tall the dog always has to be on a some type of a chain or you know a secured leash when, mm -hmm. leash when you're walking it and so what you need to know is if you're not in compliance with that not only are you going to be responsible for what your dog did but you also probably are going to get a ticket. Okay, because so. that's required. Is it, that's certain required. Breeds. So if you do have a dog that is bitten or what, is there any sort of like register, you have to, you know, registry type of Right, thing so it, and, and again, that varies city to city to city. Okay. So in Des Moines, yes, there's licensure that's required um, and you have to license the dog. I, I believe it, I'd have to double check, but I believe it does require, if you know it's a high-risk dog, you have to license it as a high-risk dog because that's the reason, then that, that's how they're able to say, okay, do you have your $100,000 policy? And so when you go to license it, they're going to say where's your proof of insurance mm -hmm. and um, and then also you know when there's an investigation if the dog does bite they're going to be checking you know did the did you have a high enough fence you know how what, how did the dog get loose if the dog got loose so but it varies city to city it does. Mean, some cities don't have anything other cities um, you know don't have any insurance requirements so you really need to check where you live. You live. Does, yes. this, does this apply for other, and like I know, like a cat bite, for instance? Yeah, Because I know there can be a series of antibiotics. Be, I mean, they can't do as much, but there can be a whole series right, of antibiotics. Right, and right, right. So, so animal, so animal bites can, can. I mean, if if my cat. You know, if you came walking into my apartment and I knew my cat likes to pounce on people and it pounced on you and maybe scratched your face up or whatever, then then yes, could I be liable for that? Absolutely. So um, so yeah, all sorts of um, animals. The other thing is is you know. I understand we all love our dogs um, mm -hmm. and our, our cats, and and so uh, and to to a lot of us they're like our babies. Um, but if your dog bites someone. Please, please, please make sure that you let the dog be tested. You, you work with um, animal control because I've also had cases where somebody's afraid that their dog's going to be put down, so they run with the dog or they hide the dog, oh, okay. and then the person has the person who was bit has to go through rabies shots because if we don't yeah, have just... testing and we don't have the records within, I think it's a very short amount of time, might be 48, 72 hours. Then on top of the fact that this kid's just been mauled, now they have to undergo the rabies shots. So you just want to make sure that you're doing the right thing and complying with the law. So, do, what's the role do vets <coughs> play in this at all? Do they? Because I know if they have and they know that they're a high risk, do they do any sort of reporting or anything? You like know, that? that I don't know. That I don't know. I mean, I do, um, and I my my guess would be no, but I guess I guess I don't really know the answer. I do know that. I mean, even at. Um, animal shelters, you know, and we all, uh, you know, and animal, animal shelters are kind of near and dear to my heart because nobody likes to see, you know, animals out running around or being homeless. Uh, but even at animal shelters, um, there can be a liability. I mean, we've got a case we're working on right now where a dog was brought in and it was known to have been bitten, but it was put into um, an area where, with no warning. And so, of course, a little girl came in to play with the dogs to try to pick out a dog and she was attacked. Um, so you just need to be aware that really no matter where you are or even if you're an animal shelter that you have to be careful because you know these dogs you know whether or not they intend to hurt somebody or they just, just thought they were playing or, or stress <coughs> you know um, we just want to make sure that everybody understands that you have to take precautions ahead of time mm -hmm. to make sure you're protected 
um, and to make sure that uh, that your dog's going to be okay and that you're going to be okay. And if so. you do this, decide to adopt a, a high-risk breed so they're uh, claimed, make sure mm -hmm. you're following city ordinances exactly. where you live as well. So exactly. we're, we're uh, uh, staying and within the law. Plan. And check your insurance And check your insurance plan. I know, I know. It always Great sounds like I'm, sounds always. Like I'm <laughs> selling insurance, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Lots we are saying to have an incredible cup of coffee with Kim Berka. She always has great advice, and she might be able to help you out with the situation you're dealing with right now. So, Kim, how can they find you? Yeah, just give us a call, 515-279-2000. Or if you're injured, you can always call us at 515-INJURED. Wonderful. Always great to see you, yes. my dear. Yes. Thank you very much. You can also learn more by going to BearLawOffice.com. Great advice, as always. Make sure you're staying safe out there. You're watching.